Hi there and welcome to The Wrap, a quick look at the week that was. I'm Diana Dorohy. Well, a big, very big thank you to all those who registered and attended the French tech panel that we had on yesterday. It was all about tackling the huge issue of eliminating gender bias in the workplace and in the investment space. And there were so many key takeaways about how to better handle it at various points along the funnel, how to understand and prevent uh, unconscious bias, a, a big issue for, for female founders, and what effective support for female-led businesses look like. Now, if you missed it, don't worry, we're gonna do a big summary and put it uh, online in our, in our newsroom next week, and you can uh, check out all the highlights there. In funding news this week, lots of, uh, lots of great stories around, Demodesk, which was uh, an early stage startup and Y Combinator grad has announced a, an $8 million Series A round. And it was uh, co-founded by Veronica Rydell. And Demodesk is a, a platform designed to deliver online sales demos remotely. Talk about a, a COVID benefit business. Indian food startup Zomato uh, has released has raised at 60 mil, 62 million dollars, uh, largely from uh, Tamasek. Uh, it's had uh, this raise in the pipeline for the better part of a year, but the uh, the delivery startup has had um, much better figures this year and, and hence the raise. Uh, Transposit, a company built by engineers for engineers by helping getting systems back up and running faster when things go wrong, has secured a, a 35 million Series B round. Founder and CTO Tina Huang says uh, technology is and issues around it are less about engineering and more about human problems. And because it's humans who've got to clean up the mess when things go wrong. And, and she said forgetting the human side of things is where she thinks technology has gone astray and uh, her CEO as well, the two of them have been uh, sort of in the spotlight because they're trying to uh, be uh, strive for, for, for more gender equality in their business. I think they've got 26 employees so far and it's certainly uh, one to watch. And finally, CareWell, which is a platform for caregivers, has announced a $5 million seed round. And it started by this husband and wife team in the US. And the platform provides a whole range of both vetted products, medical products, and services for informal caregivers like family uh, to be able to look after their loved ones in terms of um, getting those medical supplies that's that are required and also providing care education for example you know how to to feed a, a, a loved one who is suffering from dementia as an example uh, obviously no surprise that they've had a big spike this year so keep an eye out for future raises, I think, for, for CareWell as well. Uh, my story of the week this week goes to a piece about how to close the gender gap in venture capital. And it was pretty EU focused, this piece, but there were some really good points that I think could resonate globally. And it talked about the European Investment Bank and the fact that they've now adopted a strategy on gender equality and women's economic empowerment. And their goal is to identify innovative and high growth female led companies, then provide advice, financing options and facilitate connections with other market players. And we're going to talk about that a little bit next week as well. So stay tuned for the end of the wrap. There was also a great piece this week about the rise of femtech. And one of the investors quoted in the piece is that, you know, no matter what product you have, if you're not thinking about three key things, equitability, affordability and accessibility, then it's not going to last very long. You know, no point in developing a product that can't be reached by those who need it most. My tip of the week this week comes from a really powerful piece by our founder, Nicole, about timing your raise. 
And unfortunately, when it comes to capital raising, women typically raise later, they raise less, and it takes them a lot longer than their male counterparts. And of course, if that isn't disappointing enough, women also bootstrap to avoid raising debt. And she says the key to, to seem changing these seemingly entrenched facts is both simple and complex. Women need to understand the benefits of fundraising and capital raise much earlier. Check out all the different options that she talks about by reading her piece in the newsroom this week. Coming up next week on Next Chapter Raise, I mentioned the European Investment Bank and the, this report that they put out. And Nicole and I are going to sit down and break it down, pull out the key pieces of information. We're going to go through the latest trends and recommendations about funding women entrepreneurs as seen by the EIB. Stay tuned for that. Until then, have a great weekend and see you next time on The Wrap.